This week, Malingar hosts the semi-finals of the Red Mills Irish Cesarewich, whilst the Green Property Oaks quarter-finals are run at Sheldon Park. We pay a visit to the Heavenly Stud in County Wexford, but first the best bitches battle it out in the final of the Open Bitch 550. We're here at Howard's Cross for the final of the Open Beach 550, a very competitive race in prospect with number one princely lady, Lemon Mandy in two, and fast Lizzie out on the outside, the main contenders. Well, the runners now on parade for the final of the Harold's Cross Bitch 550. Trap number one is Princely Lady. This is the Christmas Oaks winner here, of course. She's trained by Paul Kiley, owned by Roy Shorter in England. This is a daughter of Staplers Joe, and that's my lady. In Trap 2 is an impressive semi-final winner, Lemon Mandy. This one owned and trained by Tom Lennon in Kilkenny. This a daughter of Roanoke and Lemon Holly. Must have serious chances here. Well, the likely favourite, Tamla Rose, was a non-runner. And coming in as a reserve, this is reserve end Sinead's Mandy, trained by Ger Holian, owned by Davy Lavelle and Brina Hughes in Galway. This a daughter of Come On Ranger and Sinead's Valley, a strong stayer. Expect her to be flying at the finish. In four, we have Phoenix Kiss, trained by Ian Riley. This daughter of Staplers Joe and Fly Minx is owned by Eamon Cleary and Dermot Cantlin in Mead. Another strong running bitch, this. In five, in the orange jacket is Fast Lizzie, trained by Seamus Graham and Balak Moyler. This daughter of Right Move and Mary's Lizzie is owned by the Horse and Hound Syndicate in Limerick. And completing the lineup, Iron Scamp, trained by Martin Lanny and owned by the Sensory Syndicate in Mead. This is a daughter of Staplers Joe and Amy's Gold. Possesses real early gears, ideally drawn in the stripes. Well, the runners now all in traps for the final of the Harold's Cross Bitch 550. The favourite here, trap number one, Princely Lady. She's been strongly supported. She's now a six to four favourite. In trap order, one is Princely Lady, two Lemon Mandy, and three the reserve, Sinead's Mandy, four Phoenix Kit, five Fast Lizzie, and in trap number six, the early pacer, Iron Scamp. And away they go, and first to show on the outside is Iron Scamp. On the inside, number two, Lemon Mandy, and further in is number one, Princely Lady, with an ideal draw. Around the opening corner, number one, Princely Lady squeezes round in front. From number two, Lemon Mandy, and third, Iron Scamp. Back and forth is number four Phoenix Kid, but out front is number one Princely Lady, past halfway. She won the Christmas Oaks earlier in the year. Can she win this? The Harold's Cross Pitch 550. She's still in front. In second, Lam Lemon Mandy, and further back in third is Iron Scamp. But around the final corner, Princely Lady's in front. She's not going to be caught. Storming up the home straight, she wins it from number two Lemon Mandy, third, number four Phoenix Kid. And the final result, the winner was number one, Princely Lady, second, number two, Lemon Mandy, third, number four, Phoenix Kid, the winning time, 30.68. Well, the money poured on Princely Lady in the final of the Open Bitch 550. She duly obliged. Her second Oak success here at Harold's Cross. Paul Kiley, this is a lucky place for you. Yeah, it's been a very lucky track for me, going back through the years with a, a dog I had called Tiger King, who got to the Puppy Derby final for Michael Henry that I sold him after winning the race here. And uh, I've always liked to come here. I find it's a good early pace track, and they're the type of dogs I like to keep, and so I'll always hopefully keep coming here. Well, Princely Lady, she really ran a blinder. Well drawn in one. Well, well drawn in one, Michael. Uh, five last week in the semi-final, but she tended to move in and made a mess of herself last week. But when I got the draw for the final, I was quite happy. Even though, too, uh, the lemon bitch, wicked fast up to the bend, too, and stays on fairly strong. So, uh, Tam was unfortunately a long runner. So, my luck came into nice and I just won again. So, Well, when you led into the back straight, it really was going to take something special to come from behind her. Yeah, looking at the way she ran last week and the previous week, it was her first run back after being off from a little injury in Kilkenny. Uh, she appeared to be staying on very strong, so while in front tonight, I said, well, as again, get around the third bend and fingers crossed, I was hoping she'd stay on. Well, you've already told us that the, the Big Oaks is your main target for the year, but what happened between now and then? Uh, the main Oaks, I'm looking at the Oaks in Cork. Uh, I'm thinking of going to Cork. Uh, I'll have a think of it during the week and take it but at the same time I don't want to raise the legs off her. I want to keep her fresh for the main oaks which is my ambition. At the foot of the Blackstairs Mountains one greyhound breeder believes that heaven is a place on earth. The affluent state of the greyhound industry prompted him to leave the licensing trade and make a large investment in purpose-built state-of-the-art facilities for both training and breeding greyhounds. This new venture is expected to reap rewards for the Wexford stud owner, John Donoghue. 
I took out a trainer's license in the early 70s. Uh, then I packed it in after a few years. The Greyhound gave me this, it was bad. No, it wasn't much money to be earned in it. Uh, we went into the license trade and uh, in the past five years there's been dramatic changes in prize money, in breeding, in the sale of dogs. And the game has got very, very good. There's young people coming into the game, which is good. And it gives you good foresight into saying, well, you know, there's a living there to be earned for even the younger generation coming on. So that's why I decided that I'd give it a shot. The office is the nerve centre of the whole organisation. When we designed this site, everything had to be right here. Uh, the lads give me jibe over because they maintain that I'm on the internet. Uh, watching all the pictures, having a bit of fun and drinking tea. But I can assure you it's not as simple as that. I'm just beginning to learn what computer is all about, what the internet is all about, and the messages we're picking up on it is absolutely brilliant. I'd envisage another couple of months and I'll be probably fluent with it, but it, it's a challenge and I don't mind taking it on. If I'm busy when somebody arrives, it's nice to have somewhere for them to come in, sit down, read a magazine, watch television, whatever. I realise at this day and age that if you need to stay in the stud game in a serious way, you've got to have a fully equipped laboratory such as we have here. The design of the kennel consists of painted floors, galvanised gates and fencing, uh, stainless steel shores, and everything drains out so as it can be washed out, keep infection at its minimum. And we have the dogs isolated from the bitters naturally. You know, there's no way there can be any contact between both. Uh, again, our main concern is to keep it infection-free. Heavenly Stud invested substantially in their American stud dog, Kiowa Shawnee So. John is confident he bought a dog with the right credentials. His track record, he ran 57 races, won 47. He broke a track record in Flagler that stood, which was one of the, one of the hardest tracks in America to run. He broke that, uh, it stood for 14 years and he smashed it. He was unbeatable near enough to the bend. Uh, all these races that anybody in America had seen couldn't get over his gusto. Tremendous guts, fired himself into a first bend. You know, and that's really what we look for and that's what we think we have. Irish breeding has come to a stage where we've got a lot of Australian blood in it. It was a great thing, and the people who brought it in have to be admired for what they did. But now I think it has come to a stage where we have to cross the line somewhere. And this dog that we've brought in seems to be the answer to everybody's problems. He looks terrific. He has tremendous temperament. He was a terrible fast dog, young dog. And to me, he looks like the second Sandman, and I don't have to explain to anybody what he was. John's state-of-the-art facility stands on the site of the old hen house. Across the yard is where he keeps the racing dogs. Both operations have a loyal workforce. Most of the staff, if we want to call them staff, were all school boys. It's all family-based. It all revolves around uh, my, own, uh, my own two boys and the nephews then, which is about four, four of those as well. They all start at 6.30 in the morning, come in, do their bits and pieces, um, finish up about 8.30, get ready for school, and then when they come back in the evening time from school, they must back in again. So without those, I actually couldn't manage. And my father has been a major asset to me. He's there at every beck and call. And 71. So between everything, young people and himself has made my life easier. I've never seen youngsters so much involved in what to do. You can see it with the dogs themselves. They just love what to do. They're, they're, they're interested. You, no matter what question you ask them about, they'll come and tell you little things about them. Every dog we have in the kennel 
uh, are all named, they all have their own pet names. So they'll come and talk to you about Bob, or they'll come and talk to you about Jimmy, or whatever the case may be, and you know there's something wrong, and, and they're pretty quick to, to see things. So it's looking good. I know it's going to look a hell of a lot better. Our inquiries are brilliant, and anybody who's come to see the facilities have been more than impressed. Join us after the break for the semi-finals of the Red Mills Irish Cesarewitch and the quarter-finals of the Green Property Oaks. Less than a week after its official opening by Minister Mary O'Rourke, Mullingar Greyhound Stadium remains in the headlines. Tonight, the Midlands track hosts the semi-finals of the Red Mills Irish Cesarewitch. Fastest quarter-final winner, Mega Delight, which runs in the second semi-final, remains the hot favourite to win out this competition. There's €15,000 to the winning connections. Dogs are in traps now for this, the opening semi-final in one. Mammy's picture, two, Manic Street. Rise Quest is running from trap three. Droopy's Gloria is in four. Lissero Nose is in five. And in the striped jacket, it's Heliska Vienna. And a reminder that three will qualify for next weekend's final. Trainer Paul Hennessy doubly represented in this, the first semi-final. Heliska Vienna, the favour that's going on, showing the early pace now from Manic Street. Also well in contention is Rise Quest, but going on all the time down the back straight by a couple of lengths or so is Heliska Vienna. Manic Street is also well up in contention. The second bent from home off the final turn now. Still three dogs to qualify. Heliska Vienna is there as well. So too is Droopy's Gloria. It's going to be close up towards the line, and at the line is tremendously close between the pair. And confirmation of the result of the opening semi-final of the 2002 Red Mills Irish Sarawich. The winner, Haleska Vienna, in second spot, Droopy's Gloria, and third, Lissaroon Nose. The winning time here, 33.45. All in readiness, so, for this, the second semi-final. In one, Geordie Melody. In two, Swift Black Lady. The English challenger and also the favourite Mega Delight is in three. Long Valley Tyson running from trap four. Need Them Talking is in five. And in the stripes is Courage Prince, and they're off and racing in this, the second semi-final. Up towards the finishing line with a circuit to go, and showing in front, Long Valley Tyson, and on the rails, it's the favourite Mega Delight. Into third now, the red jacket of Geordie Melody. But up front, still in front, it's Mega Delight now going on, being seriously challenged by Long Valley Tyson. A small bit of trouble at that second bend from home, but the favourite is still showing in front and is going to win here. It's Mega Delight as they come up towards the light. This a blistering run by Mega Delight. She scores from Swift Black Lady. The complete results now of the second semi-final. The winner, Mega Delight. Second, Swift Black Lady. And third, Courage Prince. The winning time here, 33.59. The trap draw for next Sunday night's final was carried out by Michael Dempsey under the watchful eyes of Patrick Flynn, general manager, and Ollie Hester, racing manager. The trap draw is in one, Swift Black Lady, in two, Droopy's Gloria, in three, Lissaroon Nose, Mega Delight runs from trap four, Haliska Vienna in five, and trap six, Courage Prince. The Markets Field in Limerick was the venue last Saturday for the semi-finals of the Red Mills Kennedy Cup, an event that has thrown up many a classic winner in the past. A big crowd turned up and among them was J.P. McManus, back from Cheltenham where his colours were carried to victory on three occasions, and taking the opportunity to cheer on his wife Noreen's Celine Miko in the second semi-final. But first, let us look at the opening semi-final. The hair's on its way and in one is David Curtin's Glownroo guest, in two Dermot Nolan's Knockash Zero, Three, Wish Kid, owned by Leonard Kinsella. In four is Cork Johnny, owned by Phyllis Collins. Five, John Quinn's Fast Fit Spikita. And in six is Vinnie McMahon's It's Vinderlin. The break, sure to be vital. Number three, Wish Kid, out fast, going to the bend from number four. That's Cork Johnny, number one, Glownroo Guest on the inside. Around the first corner, Wish Kid in front from Glownroo Guest in second. These have pulled a few lengths clear now of number two, Knock it, Ash Zero in third. But down the back, it's Wish Kid from Glownroo Guest. A length in it, going into the third bend, Wish Kid in front, Glownroo Guest trying to challenge on the inside. Back in third, Nakash zero. But off the final bend and number one, Glownroo Guest comes up to challenge Wish Kid. It's neck and neck up the straight. Glownroo Guest, Wish Kid on the near side. Wish Kid getting back up to win from Glownroo Guest with Nakash zero in third. 
the result of the first semi-final, the winner number three, Wish Kid, second to number one, Blown Root Guest, and third, number two, Knockout Zero, time 28.76. So to the second semi, and here we have the Elaine Brooks owned Frisbee Figaro in one. Top general owned by Con O'Sullivan is in two. In three is Noreen McManus' Celine Mickle. In four, John Curtin's Quiet Castle. Running from five is Sean Cleary's Boss Toss. And in six, Long Valley Max, jointly owned by Tom and Dan Joe Collins. A lot of early pace in this one. The break will be vital. Very level start. Quiet Castle well away, but it's number one, Frisbee Figaro, going up strongly on the inside, leading into the bend from Quiet Castle. He's hampered slightly, and now number two, Top General, moves into second, ahead of Quiet Castle and Bastos, challenging for third, but down the back. Frisbee Figaro by a length and a half from number two, Top General, who's closing the gap into the third bend. It's still Frisbee in front, but Top General challenging on the inside. He takes it up coming off the fourth bend and going rolling on strongly. It's Top General drawing away to win from Frisbee Figaro with number four, Quiet Castle, in third. The result of the second semi-final, first, number two, Top General, second, number one, Frisbee Figaro, and third, number four, Quiet Castle, time 29.72. A great run, that, from Top General, but JP was left wondering about what might have been. Obviously, feeling an incident on the third bend proved Saline Miko's undoing. We are left with an intriguing final lineup on Saturday night. The trap draw is, in one, Wish Kid, two, Quiet Castle, three, Frisbee Figaro, Four, Top General. Five, Knockash Zero. And six, Glownru Guest. An encouraging development in the Greyhound circles recently has been the number of young bookmakers starting work at the tracks around the country. We caught up with one of them in Shelburne Park, JP Moran. JP, how did you get involved in bookmaking? Well, I suppose I always had an interest in betting and dogs, and my parents trained dogs. And we own dogs and stuff, you know, and so just it came from that, you know what I mean? I love, I love betting, like I'd always be watching Teddy Takes and Dog Race and Harsh Race and everything, you know, so I said, why not have a go at it, you know? We started in Newbridge now, you know, and the old Newbridge now, it's, it wasn't as, the same as it is now, you know, but just started on Friday nights and Monday nights there and kind of started off small and tried to work our way up gradually, you know. But um, then we started Harris Cross when it opened up, I played for a pitch and I got a pitch and then Shelburne, we bought up, bought Junior Hannigan's pitch in Shelburne. For a young lad like you to be middle of the line at Shelburne Park, it's a, it's a big it's pitch. <laughs> it's uh, like scary now the money you can lose, like, well, I suppose you can win as well, but the money you can lose is unbelievable now. Now we're here on a Saturday night, what type of bets will you lay here tonight? I wouldn't lay anything big, like I wouldn't lay anything, say, as big as Frank Finnegan or Ted Hegarty, but like, say we'd lay, we'd lay five or six bets over 500 pounds now, like, which is big for me, like. You know, what would your normal Saturday night hold be? Oh, 12, 14 grand, which I can go up to Anton in the summer. Like. What's the biggest memory so far, or the biggest thrill you've got, or fright you've got, betting-wise? The biggest thrill, I suppose, just the, the derby final. It was my first derby final in Shelburne this year now. And we say about a minute before the race, when the dogs were in the point of traps, the crowd would just start lifting like that. And then you could actually feel the ground once the bell went. You couldn't hear anything, and your bet's coming in, bet's coming in, and you just don't care what dogs are for. You just the whole place just lifting. And then when Late Late Show came at the run, it was fifth coming around the last bend, I think. And then he came up, and the crowd, I'd say, just went mental. Like you know, just that was the greatest memory I have now. Last Thursday, Shelburne Park hosted the quarterfinals of the Green Property Oaks. A huge crowd turned out to see who would make it through to the semis. Here's Ian. Well, the runners now in traps for the opening heat of the Green Property Oaks. The two to one favourite here, number five, Exultant. The dogs in trap order, one, Going Flight, two, I'll Be Back, three, Automatic Gem, four, Ballybock Kit, five, Exultant, and trap number six, Pinewood Rocket. The hair just coming up behind the traps now. And away they go. And first to show is number two, I'll be back. On the outside, number five, Exultant. And further back in third is number four, Ballybock Kit. Around the opening corners, though, it's number two, Going Flight, that leads a bit of trouble in behind. And number five, Exultant, has been badly balked, along with number three, a Automatic Choice. But out of the second corner, up down the far side, number two, I'll be back. Striking the front from number one, Going Flight. And third, moving strongly is Pinewood Rocket. And further back, Ballybock Kit. But around the final corner, I'll be back leads from number one, Going Flight, moving strongly. Number six, Pinewood Rocket. But number two, I'll be back gets there to beat number six, Pinewood Rock. The hair now on its way for the second heat. This two to one favourite, number six, Drive a Mini. In trap order one, Sean's Bullet. Two, Tringinus Charm. And three, Chocolate Flake. Four, Alan Band. Five, One Like You. And trap number six is Drive a Mini. The hair coming up behind traps. 
And away they go, and first to show is number six, Driver Mini, on the inside, number one, Sean's Bullet, and third, number two, Three in his charm, but into the corner, number one, Sean's Bullet goes on now from number six, Driver Mini, and third, number two, Three in his charm. Down the far side, number one, Sean's Bullet, now being challenged on the outside by Driver Mini, and third, number two, Three in his charm, and moving strongly, and fourth is one like you. But into the third corner, it's number six, Driver Mini, who has hit the front, but two lengths clear now, number one, Sean's Bullet, moving strongly, and third, one like you, but up the home straight, number six, Driver Mini, clear. Now here comes number five, one like you, but it leaves it too late. The runners now in traps for heat three and trap number one, hey good looking, two talking options. Heat three, Ambassador Lady, four, Ollie's Jog, five, Tile Martina, and six, Shanaway Spot. The favourite here, number three, Ambassador Lady, at five to four on. Here coming around the final corner up behind traps and away they go and first to show is number four Ollie's jog really flew from traps in second spot now is taking options in third number five tile martina but around the corner it's number four Ollie's jog that leads now from number two taking options who's hit the front down in third is number one hey good looking but down past halfway it's number two taking options number one hey good looking in second and number four Ollie's jog in third running strongly now in fourth moving third is number three ambassador lady the favorite but out front it's number four or number two taking options should i say in second number one hey good looking here comes number three at Basel Lady, but all too late, the winner number two taking options. Well, the hare now running for the final heat of the Green Property Oaks in trap one, Boyne Breezer, two, Carry Kill Lady, three, Mega Dancer, in four, Coolavani Pride, five, Pinewood Gull, and trap number six, Axel Grease. The hare coming around the final corner, the five to four favourite here, trap number four, Coolavani Pride. Away they go, and first to show is number three, Mega Dancer. Inside Mega Dancer, number two, Carrigan Lady, and the outside, number five, Pinewood Gull. Now with Coolavani Pride, who's slipped through at the second, but out front, Mega Dancer. Now Coolavani Pride in second, running strongly in third is Axel Grease. Past halfway, number three, Mega Dancer, now being challenged on the inside by Coolavani Pride, who's forced to check there, badly balked, and now leaves number five, Pinewood Gull in second. She's hit the front now, between the final two corners. Pinewood Gull in front, around the last corner. Second, number three, Mega Dancer, running on well as Carrigan Lady, but the winner, number five, Pinewood Gold. She wins it easily. It's a very busy week on the tracks, starting on Wednesday at Cork, where the semi-finals of the Hospitality Catering Sprint will be run. On Thursday, Shelburne will be the scene for the semi-finals of the Green Property Oaks. On Friday, at Galway, the second round of the GOBA Spring Stake will be run. Then on Saturday, a really hectic night. Limerick stages the final of the Red Mills Kennedy Cup, while at Cork there's the final of the Hospitality Catering Super Sprint. And at Shelburne, where the first round of the BCR Press Easter Cup will be run, and the Late Late Show will be back in action. Then on Sunday at Mullingar, the final of the Red Mills Irish Cesarewitch. And a reminder, Cork will have an extra night's racing on Friday, and of course they'll be showing Intertrack from Harold's Cross. Join us next week for the finals of the Red Mills Irish Cesarewitch and the Kennedy Cup, the semi-finals of the Green Property Oaks and the eagerly awaited first round of the BCR Press Easter Cup. For further information on Irish Greyhound racing, ownership and syndication, visit our website at www.igb.ie or email us at admin at igb.ie.